generating random values is extremely useful in games. It can be used to create variety in gameplay, behaviors, or even build entire worlds from scratch. Let's jump right in. Let's say we want to make an action based on rolling the dice. Here we have a sample scene with a button and a sprite with one of the six faces of our dice. Go ahead and download this project for free to follow along. Now we need to create a simple script that will roll a random number and update the dice visual for us. Select the sprite on the scene, click Add Component, type Random Generator and Submit. Inside of it, let's create a roll method that for now will only do a debug.log rolled the dice. In Unity, connect that method to the button placed on the screen. That way, whenever we press the button, this logic will be called. Inside our class, add the sprite array as a public property. We are going to use those sprites to update our image on the screen. Fill that array with the faces of our dice. Inside of our new method, let's pick a random value based on the number of faces we have. We can do that by typing int face index equals random.range between 0 and faces.length and replace the sprite we are currently using by typing get component sprite renderer that sprite equals faces face index. And voila! Every time we click our button, we roll the dice. Let's move on. Here I have a different scene where we'll be placing some random objects. You can see that I already prepared those prefabs like tree, chest, and a setup similar to our previous scene that would trigger the spawn objects method on a button press. To spawn a random object on our scene, first we need to generate its position. While there is no convenient way of doing this in Unity, we can create our own method. Let's call it getRandomPosition, it will output vector2. We will need to randomize each individual component of our position, x and y, independently. So float x equals random.range between minus 5f and 5f, and the same for the float y. Based on those two values, we can return new vector2 with the parameters of x and y. In the spawn objects method, I can now type vector2 position equals get random position and then to preview it, debug.log position. After those changes, we are now getting a randomized vector on each button press. Notice that this time the values are not integers. That is thanks to the F symbols that represent float types. To spawn a new object in this randomized location, firstly, let's define a prefab that will be spawning. At the top, I will type public game object object to spawn. Then in the spawn objects method, let's add game object that instantiate and pass in the prefab to instantiate, the position in the world to place our new object, quaternion.identity, which means that we won't apply any rotation, and finally, the parent object, in this case, I will assign this object by just typing transform. Save the script, in the inspector assign any prefab that should be spawned, and run the game. Now, each time we press this button, a new game object is being spawned. The only issue for now is that the range in which those objects are spawned is quite limited. We can of course modify those values specified here, but I think there is a better way to handle that. To get more control over the spawning range, I'm going to add two properties, public vector to x range and y range. The idea is that using those variables, we'll define a rectangle within which objects will be spawned. For now, setting those values doesn't do much and it's still hard for us to visualize it, but we can add these handy gizmos that will show us the defined range in the Unity editor. If you don't know how gizmos work, subscribe to not miss out in coming tutorials about them. Now with our get random position, we can take those values as a random range instead of having a hard-coded numbers. When I press play and click randomize button, a new object should be spawned on our scene within the defined range. Awesome! The last part, spawning multiple different objects at a time. 
we'll start by turning our object to spawn property into an array. Now inside our spawn objects method, we need to randomly choose an object in that array. int object index equals random between zero and all possible objects. And then pass that variable as an index in the instantiate method. Additionally, we can put all of that into the loop, which repetition count will be defined as a new public variable. And that's it. You just built your first procedural environment. Congratulations. In Unity, define all prefabs we'll be using and the amount of objects to spawn. Now on every button press, a new terrain will be generated. If you want to learn more about Unity, check out my other videos shown on the screen. Special thanks to all of my patrons supporting CocoCode. See you soon.